What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Let's quickly speak converting a drive from MBR to GPT. It's super simple and usually incredibly safe. There's just a couple of things to look out for, but we'll touch on them later. Usually this needs to be done to enable things like secure boot, UEFI mode, etc. Before we actually begin, there's one thing we need to verify, and that's if our motherboard can actually support UEFI mode. If we hit start, type in MS info as such, and open up system information, have a look down here for your baseboard manufacturer and baseboard product. This is your currently installed motherboard. Mine is the Z790 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. What we need to do is take these two bits of info and head across to Google. What we need to do is search our motherboard's manufacturer and the actual motherboard name, followed by enable UEFI. Once we search for this, we'll find specific guides for our particular motherboard, showing us how to enable secure boot in most cases, and of course, enable UEFI mode. As long as your system actually supports UEFI mode, which you should very quickly find out here, then we can proceed. If you have a really old motherboard that doesn't support UEFI, unfortunately, you won't be able to convert your drive to GPT as you won't be able to reboot into Windows. So without further ado, let's begin. First of all, let's check what kind of drive you have in your system. I'll hit start, type in partition, and we'll open up create and format hard disk partitions. Inside of disk management, that opens up, you can also search for disk management instead. Simply locate your C drive or wherever Windows is installed. For me, it's disk zero, C drive over here. Right click disk zero on the far left and choose properties. Inside of here, head across to the volumes tab at the very top. And in here, you can see if you're running MBR or GPT. Currently, mine's MBR. And in order to enable secure boot, as well as UEFI mode, we'll need to change this to GPT. This is usually a safe process to do, and it's pretty quick, but just make sure you have all of your important data backed up. You should have pretty strong backups already, so I'll continue assuming you've backed up your most important data. First of all, before we do anything, if you're currently using BitLocker on your system or don't know what that is, hit start, type in BitLocker and open up Manage BitLocker. This is a full drive encryption. And of course, if yours is enabled, it's a good idea to turn it off before we actually proceed. This is going to take quite a long time. And of course, if you wish, you can convert your drive without worrying about BitLocker. It's just a good idea to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Once BitLocker is disabled, you can close this. And assuming you can't just right click your drive here and change it to GPT, we'll need to use commands to do so. Keep in mind what the disk number is here. For me, it's disk zero. To actually convert your drive type, hit start, type in CMD, and we'll open command prompt as administrator. I'll choose yes here. And inside of this new window, we'll go ahead and run MBR to GPT space forward slash validate space forward slash allow full OS as such. If yours is on a different drive, as in something other than drive zero, just before allow full OS, add slash disk colon followed by the number, be it one, two, three, etc. If yours is disk zero, you can leave out the section. Then hit enter. Just like this, it'll check to see if our drive can be converted to GPC and if there'll be any noticeable issues. Once it runs through, you can see this one's fine, so we can continue. We can convert it using the previous command, so I'll use up to get back to it. Then we'll use the left arrow key and take out validate and replace it with convert. So MBR to GPT slash convert slash allow full OS. Once you're ready to convert your drive, hit enter and it'll run through. This should take slightly longer, but it definitely shouldn't be minutes or even hours. Once it's complete, there we go. Now it says before the new system can boot properly, you need to switch the firmware to boot to UEFI mode. Now, before we restart our system and go to the BIOS to change a few important settings, we need to double check some things. Once again, Google your motherboard's manufacturer, model, and of course, enable UEFI. We'll need to follow a guide more closely in just a moment when we get to our BIOS to enable UEFI mode. Usually, you'll need to find and change the boot mode into UEFI from legacy or something like that. But on some other boards, like mine, we'll also need to disable CSM support. Usually, there's just one or two options you need to change, but you do need to find out which ones and where they are in your BIOS in order to get everything working again. If you don't change both of these settings, for example, on my system, I wouldn't be able to boot back into Windows until we do. 
Once you're ready to reboot to your BIOS and change one or two settings, hit start, type in CMD and open command prompt as administrator. Enter the command shutdown space forward slash R space forward slash FW and this should restart our system as soon as we hit enter and take us straight to the firmware or in other words, your motherboard's BIOS or motherboard's settings. Alternatively, you can hit start, click on power and then choose restart and when your system's rebooting, when you usually see your motherboard's manufacturer's icon, just underneath it, you'll see press F2, F12, delete, or any other combination of keys to open up your motherboard's BIOS settings. Either use this command, or if this doesn't work, you'll need to restart your system and press that key to get to your motherboard's settings. Now, unfortunately, here's where things get a bit difficult as I can't show you exactly what you need to do as the steps are so different for different manufacturers' motherboards. The one that I can show you just as an example, is a Lenovo's BIOS, simply because they have a website where I can show you what you need to do. This is what it might look like for you, and the steps should be relatively similar based on your motherboard. You'll find a tab called Security, followed by looking for Secure Boot in this case, and all we need to do is change it to Enabled. Just like that, our system should now be set and ready to go. Just keep in mind, on some of the boards, you'll need to find an option called CSM and disable that, which is usually the compatibility support module or, in other words, legacy boot mode or BIOS boot mode instead of UEFI. Here, the only UEFI option I can find is Windows UEFI firmware update, which I don't think is correct, but just doing some quick editing here, if it says something like UEFI mode, make sure it's turned on or CSM mode, for example, you'll need to make sure that's disabled. Once you've made the changes necessary on your system, you'll need to hit a key to save and exit, in this case, F10. Once you've done so, you should be able to boot back into Windows and get to playing Battlefield 6 or whatever you're trying to convert your drive form. That's it. So, hopefully you found this video useful. I'm sorry you had to go through this, but hopefully this helps you. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.